Today's episode is brought to you by Eagle Energy. Eagle Energy is a plant-based caffeine inhaler which provides you with an effective and fast-acting energy boost. Listen, people, bottom line, if you're trying to cut out those high sugary monster energy drinks that take 30, sometimes 45 minutes, and not even to mention they're not healthy for you, if you're trying to cut that out of your diet, Eagle Energy is the product for you. I use it first thing in the morning when I want to get a quick start to my day, a little jump, a little bolt, same thing. Uh, I use it, my friends use it, my parents use it. Remember, everyone that's worried about you know the no sugar intake, no calories, that's perfect for you. Eagle Energy has no sugar, has no calories. It's plant-based, so it's healthy. You can talk to all your friends about it, say how you're plant-based. It's a great product. It wakes me up in the morning. It allows me to stay focused on the tasks at hand. And more importantly, it allows me to finish my tasks at hand. And starting the high button here, there's definitely been a lot of tasks. So I have to thank Eagle Energy for that. So thank you very much to Eagle Energy. All right, Luke, we're going here. Thanks for coming to the show, man. Appreciate it. I appreciate the invite. How's life? Not too bad, man. Good? Yeah, can't complain. You got to be closer up to the mic. You got to bring oh, it in sorry. there. Here we go. You even like bring it up because like it's down to your chin, like even up. Like that? Just like right I there. Be able to see okay, put it lower. Every single time we start the podcast, I always got to get it right there. That's perfect. Right, right there. there. Perfect. Right. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. In the intro, you'll hear it when I put it out, like I was saying, essentially, at least in my mind, when I think of lacrosse way back when I was younger, I remember going to watch junior lacrosse players at spry field rink yeah and just seeing it absolutely packed remember you go again and then on the northwest side just seeing like brandon newton and all those boys and when i think about lacrosse back in you know the younger days i just think of you guys because you guys were the only ones essentially that brought the crowds out is it does that make sense yeah. and when i see crowds i think okay this sport is relevant so when i mentioned you in the intro i just said that essentially you were one of the first guys that i ever knew to play lacrosse in the province that were like oh, okay this guy can actually play the game so oh, that's why you. i'm kind of it's hard for me to give all compliments because i play the game myself and you know but i do know you're a great player so i'm happy to have you here and there's a lot of people i think in the province of nova scotia that are getting excited about the sport of lacrosse now because of the pro team coming definitely so that's why i'm happy to have you here to maybe like spread or just talk about the game and where you think it's going here in the sport of Nova Scotia. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I certainly appreciate the kind words. Yeah, man, no worries. Where do I think the sport is going? Hopefully up and up and up and up. Um, I think a big problem that we have around here is uh, youth youth leagues feeding, feeding the junior teams. Yeah. So I'm hoping um, like at a grassroots level, hopefully the NLL team, hopefully a lot of, ki- a lot of kids and parents yeah. <clears throat> that wouldn't otherwise... Uh, know too much about the game hopefully yeah. we'll go check out a game and be instantly hooked which i think they will be well it's a huge thing like what you're doing with your coaching i know you guys have won three years in a row, in a row with uh, the junior team in dartmouth yeah but like you're exactly right with the teams below that and the midget and the what i don't even know what's below it novice timbits i don't know for the lacrosse league but very, i remember yeah very similar to hockey yeah i remember being younger not younger <laughs> probably like 15 20 and at that point i knew how to somewhat play the game and seeing kids below me practicing in a gym and just doing absolutely not even knowing how to play the game really just passing the ball off the wall and shooting at a net yeah nothing real no systems nothing really like that yeah and like you just said with the pro team coming here hopefully they get involved in the community yeah sick. yeah um i haven't heard too too much but i would have to assume that they they would be doing stuff like that yeah 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 i would hope anyway so how did the game get introduced to uh to you because i know my story but what's what's your story how did it get introduced um when i first started pl- when i started playing lacrosse it was pretty much non-existent around here oddly enough the senior there was a mar- like a maritime senior league at the time i was like 12 so it's a long there time there was ago, a senior yeah. league back then yeah there were three teams in new brunswick and three in uh and three in nova scotia never knew that yeah there was the f- uh well, the original Sackville Orangutans. There was the Dartmouth Bandit senior team. Um, oh, wow. There was the Sackville Wolves senior team. There was the Fredericton Highlanders, the Fredericton Saints, and the St. John Storm, I believe. This was back when you were 12. Yeah. And you could still name all those teams. That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> that was a long time ago, yeah. Um, I was playing hockey with a guy. His name is Matt Lindsay. Um, you might know that name. He played junior A hockey. I know the name. Yeah, he was a good hockey player in his day. Okay. Um, yeah, he had a couple of sticks, and we just kind of messed around with them. And uh, there was a uh, try lacrosse session at the old Sackville Arena that S- Steve Brown um, uh, was running at the time. Yeah, so we okay. went, yeah, we went and checked that out and just kind of asked our, asked our dads to sign us up, and that was it. So back when you first like put the stick in your hand, did you bring the stick to school, and kids were like, what's that? What are you doing? Like, Was there other kids that you were friends with that were just like, what the hell is that thing? I used to get that all the time. 
Yeah, I joke. I call it the dark ages of lacrosse in Nova Scotia. I survived them. That's kind of my. That's I always always say that as a joke. But yeah, my uh, my father was a plumber and he built me a net, and so I used to drag that anywhere I could to go shoot. And yeah, that was almost a daily thing where somebody would stop me. I'd say nine times out of ten, if somebody stopped to talk to me, they'd say, "What is that?" But there was usually like one in ten will say like a you know middle aged sort of man. Said, yeah. oh my god like lacrosse i haven't seen that around here since like the 70s blah 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 so like people would just stop you on the streets or something yeah. like what is that yeah that's part of the reason why i got hooked honestly it's just it was something different you kind of felt like an ambassador at the time you probably didn't know it but you're like oh people are asking about this like kind of you know this is cool yeah i mean i played baseball and hockey um from a young age up until that point and um yeah i just never really felt i guess that spark about the you know the baseball or hockey like i did with lacrosse i was instantly hooked i guess part of the reason why just like i said it was different but i was like you know i could kind of catch and throw i could shoot a little bit like my first first year i scored some goals and stuff like that so i played defense and hockey my whole life i couldn't score to save you know couldn't score to save my life so would you say that you liked (laughs) it more than hockey and baseball due to the fact that it came more naturally to you or was it something else that made you get hooked um, to it yeah i never really thought of it that way but yeah maybe Yeah? yeah yeah I think yep. that was a huge reason for me. Yeah. It came really so natural. Yeah. Just being on your feet, obviously it's a more natural state, but yeah, I think just from hockey and look, or yeah, from hockey and baseball, excuse me, I already had the hand eye coordination that yeah. was sort of necessary. So yeah. Yeah. Do you ever, so. do you remember at a younger age, maybe convincing someone to try the sport? I know you said, uh, Lindsay and yourself were the only two that played, but do you remember bringing any other friends on board and just being like, Hey, look at this. And they're still playing today. Um, you Ryan Fougier, I would say, that are still playing today. Because you grew up in the North End, right? Yeah. yeah. Jody Gorman. Um, Jordan, he, I he, about Jordan. Yeah, he started playing shortly there, uh, shortly after I did. My buddy Lee, Lee Jarrett, he had a pretty uh, pretty good run there with lacrosse uh, for a while. Um, but yeah, a lot of the younger North Enders, I think that would be closer to your age, like maybe RJ, um, Ryan Fougier, Scott Berrigan. Um, who else? Sanchez is one. Yeah, because um, there was a great hub there in the North End. Totally. And it's great gone. hub. Yeah, it's gone now, I, as far as I could tell. But we were all Northwest guys. Like, we all grew up playing for Northwest, but like, the, obviously, as you know, the Northwest Junior team is now folded just because they had no. Um, yeah no sort of feeder systems unfortunately but they're coming back this year though like the the the, the rebels or yeah, the st margaret's bay rebels yeah, yeah yeah they moved i think it's going to be really good for the league yeah i'm happy because from i don't know much about it from what i hear uh, st margaret's has a pretty good like youth programs and stuff like that so well not even just the team the league because i obviously i played senior last year and and marty's on my team and he was co- or not marty is on my team but who was coaching that was on my team um Drew, he was coaching. Who's he coaching? Southwest. Drew. Southwest. Drew McDonald, and I, yeah. Drew McDonald. I remember every single time he came in the room, he just had nothing but amazing things to say about the league, how like the fan base was growing, yeah. how the pace of the league is so much better from when he played. He just has nothing but great things to say about it. And honestly, I, I didn't see any games last year, probably the year before. Yeah. But from what these guys are saying, I'm kind of excited to get back in the rink and just look at the sport again and just see where the youth is, is going to take it because that's the future essentially yeah definitely what have you noticed as a coach over in dartmouth from when you played what have you noticed like what are the differences um the speed of the game just the overall skill um obviously like there's a lot of guys now that are traveling to play going to play in ontario going to play like box lacrosse junior in ontario getting there's, recruited out of here yeah 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 definitely there's guys that are playing prep school high school in the states there's a few guys that are playing like pretty big time college uh, in the states so yeah. yeah i think just given i don't know i always thought that we had like ge- we had geography kind of working against us being from nova you know always from nova scotia small community around here but yeah um i guess guys leaving and and you know kind of learning yeah and whether it be box across or field across and then coming back and kind of yeah so i think uh that's a that's honestly a big part of uh the growth of the game but um just the numbers too the numbers numbers are growing absolutely i would say so wow yeah because i heard over in the summer i heard something different that it was shrinking so that's good though Mm. yeah yeah that might be true yeah i think i have a pretty narrow uh narrow view i guess my only involvement is the junior league so yeah i mean when i played there was northwest southwest there was a saint margaret's team saint margaret's bay team for a year or two and bedford yeah dartmouth 
but yeah so obviously adding adding a couple teams yeah so maybe yeah so riddle me this why back when you played junior was spryfield packed and then when i played not so much in the finals like why why was your style of lacrosse because the, even though there's only like a five maybe four year difference you're like i remember going to those games and being jacked the night before <laughs> to go back and watch that game yeah and don't get me wrong i was excited to play in the games when i played but i just remember the crowds just being insane at your games why, why do you think they were at your time when you played um because i haven't seen crowds like that since yeah the final uh the finals the last couple of years uh with us the, the we've we've had really good crowds. yeah um and the, back in those days i'm not really sure uh my last two years a junior it was us uh halifax northwest and bedford that played yeah. in the finals yeah and we had a pretty pretty he like heated rivalry um that sort of built up uh over a couple of years but i don't know maybe to do with the fact that i mean obviously now it's kind of hard to get to get rinks but even back in those days it was even more difficult i you know i think northwest and southwest uh shared spryfield i want to i can't remember Maybe it had to do with that. I'm not really too sure. I never, I never yeah. give that any thought. But yeah. I, I just remember being younger, going to those games, and just seeing um, what's his name? Who's the coach? Hum. Yeah, Norman Hum. And I yeah. just remember hearing stories about him just being so intense with the players, but in a good way. He was one of those coaches that just like pushed his players, but his players respected him because they made these players better. Yeah. And then I just remember watching the intensity of some of the players going out on the floor. Even Jody Gorman, even though he was one of the better players on the team, just the physical aspect that he brought to the game was so new to me i guess like i think the physicality of hockey and lacrosse is a lot different and sure, just watching even brandon newton just flying through the middle and plowing guys over <laughs> yeah. it was just little things like that that i was lucky enough to play with those guys yeah for a long time, so exactly <laughs> i was never on the wrong end of it and i remember being in midget watching that and be like you know the skinny kid i'm still kind of skinny but i remember watching that being like listen justin this is going to be a big step up and i remember just thinking that lacrosse was such a special sport to me and hopefully it was going to grow and it has grown from when i played to where it is now especially getting like i said the pro team i've probably mentioned that like eight times but it's a big deal it, well, it is a big deal for sure um but i want to talk about your uh, junior team though three years in a row championship yeah humble guy you seem like right now <laughs> but that's a big deal what's what are the keys to success that you guys have had the past three years that's incredible man yeah be a little cocky here talk uh... <laughs> I mean, it. Uh, I'm going into my fourth year uh, with the Bandits as a head coach. I was a, the assistant coach behind uh, Mitch Hannigan uh, okay. for three years prior to that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we kind of we had some hard luck in the first uh, first handful of years. Uh, How so? Just we we would do really well in the regular season and just early exits in the playoffs for whatever reason. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the last three years we've had a lot of success. A lot of success. Excuse me. Um, what would I attribute that to? It's pretty complicated in my opinion, but I would say that the biggest thing is the Dartmouth organization being very, very strong. Really? Absolutely. Yeah. So how does that contribute to the players? How does that contribute to success on the floor? Um, I would each of the last, just speaking with, um, from my head coach experience, yeah. um, each of the last three years in camp, I'm getting guys from midget that are junior ready and not only just junior ready, but like, you know really? impact players for sure yeah definitely yeah um brett and penny brett draper chris millett dakota morrissey um we had, we had heinem on the show yeah, yeah. i know that yeah yeah. yeah another yeah. one yeah yeah looking forward he's having a great year at uh Rina randa yeah I'm i think they're 26 the past 26 games they've won in a row i think it is yeah they're like yeah. a favorite to win the league this year it's like, yeah, they broke a CHL record, I think. Is that right? I think so. I could be... Eh, maybe. I think you're right, though. Yeah. Is he coming back and playing with you guys again yeah. this year? Like, that's exciting. It that's is. a great stuff. Yeah. You just, know what I mean? Just talking about him. Um, so you take a guy who's playing big time, you know, top notch, the playing in the, the best junior hockey league in the world, arguably, you know? So yeah. that's a guy who knows what it takes to... Yeah kind of compete so that's you know we're lucky to have people like him how are you able to determine whether a guy from midget is ready to play at the junior level right away rather than you know maybe cutting down on his floor time and you have to almost make sure that he gets comfortable with the junior level because there's definitely some players that aren't as comfortable as maybe you and i were when you jump right into the junior league how are you able to like assess that yeah that's a good point um i think with some guys like it's pretty obvious that they're ready yeah um other guys I don't know. I just 
maybe just my experience with the game, I guess, and my experience yeah. with the league. Yeah. You know, I'm able to see things like that, I guess. But yeah. uh, we take we take a 25 a 25 man roster. Um, the last two years we've had 23 players and two goalies. So okay. I mean, we take a pretty heavy roster. So um, yeah, floor time is honestly, I would say, kind of getting that 20 the 25 guys in order. Yeah is maybe the easier of the two tasks but like game by game trying to put those eight you know put the right 18 guys out okay on the on the floor you know yeah so yeah that's probably honestly that's probably harder than uh than picking yeah but, yeah right on well there's different types of coaching styles there's different types that i like and different you know that other kids like what kind of coaching style would you say you have um i kind of i guess throughout all this i've sort of taken the most pride in the coaching style that I'm not, I guess, oddly enough, which is like, uh, just growing up, I never ever sort of responded to that, like really hard nose kind of like drill sergeant coach. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I can get stern when I need to be, but oftentimes, I don't know. I, I think I have a way of maybe sort of talking people into sort of yeah. maybe respecting my, my opinions and views and stuff yeah. like that when it comes to, when it comes to my coaching. But, um, yeah, honestly, I, I guess a big part of the re, a big part of why I got involved with coaching was just to be around the rink and be around the guys and be part of a team yeah. and stuff like that. And I just kind of look at it. As, we're all into all in it together. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, I don't think it would speak too, too, too highly of me if I, you know. Yeah, like, you're yelling at the kids, yelling and screaming, and yeah. you know, like I said, there's a time and a place, I guess. But yeah, yeah, just kind of just be real i guess and that's fair call it how i see it yeah well, that's all you can really do at the end of the day but at the end of the day also well that's an interesting perspective from your point is who who was your influence of lacrosse growing up because here in nova scotia there wasn't too many you know adults i guess you could say back then playing lacrosse so the fact that you've learned the game but when you were younger you know where, where did where did you learn i don't even know if youtube was around back then like where did you learn to play the game <laughs> that's where i learned to do everything is youtube so yeah where did you learn I started playing lacrosse before the internet was even a thing. So, <laughs> so how? That's my question. You know what I mean? You read I books. I like, how do you do it? Fourteen or fifteen, I think, when we first got the internet at my house. I was started playing <laughs> when I was twelve. So yeah, it was kind of difficult. <laughs> yeah. Um, my big lacrosse influences probably um, Sean Harrison, Brad Fawson, Craig Fawson. Um, Wayne Fink ever teach you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Wayne Fink, Norman Hum. Yeah. Um, Jeez, who else? Um, I looked up, yeah, just like a lot of the, not too many, probably not too many names that you'd recognize, but like I mentioned before, the early like Maritime Senior League. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of those guys, uh, Jamie Monroe, um, Darren Damone, Ernie Terrio. Ernie yeah, Terrio. Just, yeah, well, Sackville Wolves guys. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, I, yeah, that was the only... Yeah, no, that was yeah. That's pretty much it around here. Yeah, and then from that kind of blossomed a great a great lacrosse career, in my opinion, due to the fact that you kind of traveled the world. I know that we've been to Prague together, but I was going through your social media outlets, and you've been everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So kind of say some of like I guess some of the cooler places that you've been to and traveled the world with the game of lacrosse. Yeah. Um, geez, uh, my. F- I've been, I played in the Bermuda field lacrosse tournament like three or four times. Bermuda. And Bermuda. Yeah. It's awesome. That must be so hot. <laughs> it is. It's uh, the Labor Day, uh, Labor Day weekend. Yeah. First, the long weekend in September. Do people in Bermuda play lacrosse? Yeah. I never would have thought that. Yeah. They have a national team and everything. Yeah. It's like a mostly Canadian and American like expats. Well, that Ernie Terrio guy that I just yeah. mentioned that played for the Sackville Wolves, he was one of the like four or five guys that started lacrosse in Bermuda. No way. Yeah. Are they on, are they on like a Canadian or American level of lacrosse Bermuda? I wouldn't say so. No. no, it's a small island, and the so, lacrosse community is really small. But so when you go there, are they asking you questions on how to play the game? I wouldn't say so. You're no, not I teaching mean, them, no. No, it's no, not like that. No, definitely not. No. Uh, like I said, like the Bermuda national team, they're made up of Canadian and American. Oh, like okay, a lot of okay, American, okay. like college guys who played in American colleges and stuff like that, go there for work or or, or whatever. A lot okay. Of, so yeah, um, their coach is uh, his name is Patrick. Uh, what's his last name? Scar. They call him Scar. Scarpello. Really nice guy. His nickname Scar. Yeah. What? Does he actually have a scar? I don't think so. No. Oh, that'd be badass. Scarpello, if he did. I think is oh. his last name. I should know that. He's a really nice guy. 
if he's watching this, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, no, he coached at a D2 or D3 school in the state, so he knows he knows the game for sure, and it, it shows and how they yeah, and how they uh, kind of carry themselves and how they play. But good group of guys. Um, I've been to the Czech tournament probably. Well, this would be my tenth year. I remember going there. <laughs> I remember going there four years ago, three years ago. And as yeah. soon as we walked there, probably five, six kids walked up to you and got your autograph. I was like Parker, yeah. big man on campus. That was crazy though. That's a great tournament. Yeah, I could talk about that, or if you want to talk about it, but someone has to talk about it. I'll yeah. let you go. You've been there longer. Yeah, it's, talk about it, it. Just goes to show you the people over there. They really, really, they know how much, how much it takes to get over there and stuff like that and they love us and they appreciate us yeah so that's yeah it's cool to makes you feel like a <laughs> makes you feel like a star for a week you know but, you feel like i like i said the first time i've ever been there the moment i stepped on not even the floor just onto the facility i felt like a sense of family almost like a hmm. sense of uh you know i'm almost like i'm back home in canada weirdly enough i didn't feel like i was in a different country i just felt like if lacrosse was a country i felt like i was in lacrosse you yeah. know what i mean like as soon as you you got there guys shaking your hand from czech republic hey how are you where are you from oh you're with rod perfect okay your room's right here yeah. just no uh, no hostility no nothing it was it was such a, a cool experience on because when you, you know, let's be honest when you travel to different parts of the world you know there you got to get used to the people you got to get used to the food you got to get used to things mm. but as soon as you step onto the floor to the facility it felt like family. It was the coolest experience, coolest feeling. Yeah. To feel that 10 years in a row, that's, that's yeah, sick. It is. It's, yep. Yeah. Um, you must have made so many friends. Yeah. You my, know? the best lacrosse I think I've ever played personally was over there. Um, my best lacrosse memories come from that tournament. Um, yeah. Like you said, just the, the sort of, well, the welcoming sort of, uh, feeling that you, that you get from there. Um, yeah, the, the friends that you make that you see once a year, but it's like no time has passed. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we used to we used to be called the Adenac Warriors. Our first year was uh, 2008. We went 2008 and 2009 as the Adenac Warriors. Then we changed to the Nova Scotia Privateers. But even in the span of time that I've been going to the tournament, the, it's gotten so much bigger, so much better. Really? Like way more. Oh, yeah. Like It's grown. Definitely. And the skill... Um, the skill has gone up to, like to say tenfold would be probably an understatement. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's something to see for sure. That must be cool seeing it from like when you, when you say 2008, you went yep. first time to yep. now and yep. just seeing that progress. That's yep. sick. That's a cool, that's a cool thing to say you've done. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm very, very fortunate. Yeah. Where else have you gone? Uh, I played... I just recently got back from New Orleans. I played in a field lacrosse tournament down there. Um, Talk about that. Like two or three weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, the Mardi Gras tournament. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. I Did played. you go to actually Mardi Gras? Um, no, it was the start of their parade season, though. Um, and apparently it just gets like progressively crazier and crazier leading up to Mardi Gras. So <laughs> I'd almost be scared to see what Mardi Gras looks like from what I saw down there. But, <laughs> yeah, the tournament was good. Um, I played for a team called Tony's Tavern. They're okay. from uh, all Texas guys. Okay. But I messaged uh connor wilson i don't know if you remember him but he's been to prague a bunch of times he's the lax all-stars guy okay he played for the privateers actually one year but he's a good friend of a bunch of all of us he's a really really good guy i know the name once again i don't know the face but i know the name yeah okay so i just messaged him and i knew that he went like a bunch of years actually i'd learned that his brother um plays for the new orleans team i think or helps organize he has something to do with the tournament down there but okay. yeah so he hooked me up with these tony's tavern guys and yeah my girlfriend and i went down and uh yeah, there was a women's tournament, there was a master's tournament, and there was like an elite like division, they called it, I guess. But yeah. Yeah, I don't get the chance to play much like competitive sort of field across uh, yeah. these days. So, yeah, that was, uh, it was fun. It was really good, yeah. That's sick. Yeah. Have you ever been to New York and played lacrosse? Yeah, yeah. I played in, uh, I played at a, a junior college down there for a couple of years in uh, Nassau County, New York, Long Island. Okay. What was that like? It, it was good. Yeah? Yeah, a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah. Um, when was that? 2004, five and six. Okay. Whoa. Okay. So a long time ago now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but since then I played in the, uh, salt shakers, uh, invitational tournament. It's like on Randall's Island. Okay, cool. Um, I played in that in 2015. I played for like the throne team Remember? Yeah. The, yeah. 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 Throne, yeah. Throne of string. Oh yeah. yeah. You're really good friends with, um, I forget his name, but he was on the, the guy that runs throne. What's his name? Uh, Joe. Joe, you're good friends with him, yeah. aren't you? Mm. You, I've seen you on a couple of his vlogs down there. Mm. Talk. Do you know when did that? How did that slump company start? Do you know anything about that company? When did they start? I'm not really too sure. Um, 
but yeah, Joe, he played for the privateers for a couple years. Yeah, he was a great guy. I remember meeting yeah. him there. But he's he does some really, really cool things with social media and his his YouTube uh, channel and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have traveled around together. Like I've seen you on his vlogs, like going to in his Jeep, you guys went somewhere. Well, that would have been that New York uh, oh, field tournament. Yeah. Is that Jay, where it was? Uh, Jay Touchmarsh and I went down there. Yeah, yeah, Jay was there as well. Yeah. yeah. We stayed at his house and he showed us a really good time when we were down there. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. I'd love to play lacrosse down in the States somewhere, even if it was for like a weekend, something like that. Yeah. That would be a cool experience. Man, there's so many, so many good tournaments down there. In New York? All Just in the States. States. Yeah. Yeah. The, that Tony's Tavern team, um, they're going to the Vail. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but that's a big one. Vail, Colorado. I have heard of that. It's the July 4th weekend, I think, but yeah. Are you going? Yeah. Sick. Yeah. So that'd be fun. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. When do you guys go to Prague? Uh, soon end of april you guys are like practicing five, a lot right now yeah we have been for a while yeah, yeah? Mm. that's how's the team looking right now good rod said it looks good i was talking to him at the the conference for the pro team they're coming here he right. said that you guys look good yeah a couple new faces but yeah yeah hoping to <laughs> well last year you guys were one like you made it to the finals yeah so you're one went away from winning it first time ever yeah we'd uh we played in the semifinals. i think oh let me think played in the semifinals in 2008 we played in the semis in 2000 oh boy maybe 12 and 13 okay i think we came third twice and fourth once so yeah i think we played in the semifinals three times but that was our first semifinal win and obviously our first uh, first time in the finals yeah but how exciting was that man that was uh and it's like it's such a quick you don't even it's such a quick turnaround you know once you get to like well, actually, like after the first day, after the round robin is over, it's like, bang, you play once a day, twice a day kind of thing until the very end, right? So you almost, we almost didn't even really have time to to think about it too much. And we we're... But you kind of like that, don't you? Like, do I you do, like, yeah. you know, if you'd rather just jump right into it and keep going. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, we played Tel Aviv uh, in the finals and it was uh, on Czech national TV. The place was packed. How was the weather? It was, it was good. I hate that floor when it's wet. Yeah. But it was good weather? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was definitely the most, I like to think I, you know, I can keep it reeled in when, <laughs> when I need to, but that was like, try not to look around too much because it was crazy. How many people do you think were there? I've tried to guess before. I don't know. It had to have been a few thousand. Standing room. Like oh, that's People awesome. watching from their houses. It was crazy. That's that's, a, that's like I've never I've never even heard of any sort of atmosphere like that as far as lacrosse is concerned anywhere in the world. Just the sort of yeah. you're in the middle of a you've seen it obviously yeah. you're in the middle of a neighborhood. Yeah. I don't I don't think I've ever seen any windows get broken or anything like that surprisingly enough I can't believe it but Yeah, it's very well netted and like caged in. Mm. And it's sick right behind the rink there's a just a big building and people are allowed up on top of the yeah. building and people stand <laughs> up there and watch the games and there's a restaurant right in the in the building as well and a bar right to the right uh, a grill right to the left or whatever yep. it is one of the more cooler but also weird places to put a rink because you are right it's right in the middle of a neighborhood yeah but if you think about it that makes it easy for the neighborhood to get access to the rink they just walk over yeah that's, that's why sick. it's a lacrosse town yeah for sure if they're kid they have women's teams like everything kids right from toddlers up yeah yeah, yeah it's pretty I, I like i never ever would have thought that you could go you know it's too bad that guys from nova scotia have to go all the way to the czech republic who experience something like that i look yeah. at that and i'm like man why couldn't we do that you know we could though but couldn't I think, we i think uh, i don't know i think what, we could like we have what's that rink down there by saint mary's it's cement yeah. but that's very similar just no stands it's it's kind of in a community yeah that could work. Yeah. It just takes a ton of organizing and no one probably wants to do that. But yeah. it, it is an experience. Anyone that's listening that's from, you know, Nova Scotia and lacrosse area, try to get over there. Try to try to make the team and try to go because it's uh, you just feel like an all star, even though you just they make you feel so welcome. It's just an amazing experience. There's a big screen. So like if you get a goal, they'll replay it on the big <laughs> screen so you can watch yourself do it all over again. And all the games are on YouTube as well. So that's sick. So even when you go back home, you can show your friends. Yeah. And I remember just being like, I, I don't think I've ever watched myself play lacrosse until I went to that tournament. Yeah. Oh, that's you know what I mean? That, I've done that years and years and years. The first thing I do is come home and watch all the games. Yeah. <laughs> Say like, I don't even unpack my bags and I can't get to the, can't get to the computer fast enough, you know? Yeah. But that's another thing that would help. Like watching yourself play. That's a huge help. Sure. Are you guys live streaming the games in junior yet? Uh, 
what was it? I can't remember if it was Bell or what the deal was, but there was not last year. I think the year before. Eastlink? They maybe it was Eastlink. Yeah, I can't remember. They but do yeah, like you local. Could, yeah, you could find uh, you can find some stuff on YouTube. Yeah, um, uh, what's Buddy's name? Uh, more sports or something like that. Oh, John Moore. John Moore. There, yeah. he does a lot of hockey stuff. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he's kind of given our our league a little bit of a okay. Yeah, some um, some highlight some, reels and some stuff like that. Stuff like that. Yeah, some interviews and stuff. Yeah. Um, there's another one, Maritime Athletic Profiles. Okay. I yeah, I know them. They yeah. came out a, a few times. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. I just remember seeing myself for the first time and being like, that's what I cradle like. That's what I run like. That's what I... <laughs> it's but weird. Do you, do you agree though? I totally... I'm going to watch this and be like, oh my God, do I really sound like that? Exactly. Or, you know what I mean? It, it is. It's weird. But it's, it helps. Yeah, totally. That's yeah. what... It helped in hockey, like watching myself, like, okay, that's what I'm doing wrong. Yeah, 100%. Like, yeah. and especially as a coach, like, you know, in the NHL now, like how they have like iPads on the bench. So if they make a mistake, they can just go right to their bench, look at the iPad and be like, that's where I messed up. Yeah. Imagine seeing that for lacrosse. Like, I know it would be tough to do in the junior league. It's probably expensive to get every team an iPad. But just being able to see yourself play the game, you could become such such a better player. At least I would have been, at least back in the day, if I could see myself. Yeah, 100%. I mean, every every college team does film, you know, do film they? room, high school. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I guess they have the budget for it. Sure. Yeah, maybe we, someday. <laughs> yeah, maybe one day. Yeah. Where are some of the coolest lacrosse facilities you've ever been to? Other than Prague, because Prague's pretty, it probably is up there, but like, you know, some of the cooler lacrosse facilities. Um, coolest lacrosse facility. I played at some nice, I played um, against some pretty like big schools uh, when I played college in the States, but I'm trying to think. Sacred Heart University, they're like, they're a division one. We played their like JV team, B okay. team. Yeah, I remember being really impressed with that school. What was so cool about it? Just huge. It was just like what you picture in a movie, you know, like in a, you know what I mean, like in like America. a cathedral or something like that. Yeah, just a gigantic university. Sick. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, when I I stayed in the Czech Republic for a month um, in 2012 and played for uh, and played for Raditon. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And for a couple weekends, I went with some of the Czech guys to uh, Berlin. They played um, for this Berlin team in like the German National Field League. They're called BHC. Yeah. And they had a really, really good. It was just like a sports club, I guess. Okay. Not really something that I've ever seen in Canada. It was just like a didn't have anything to do with any school or anything like that. I don't think it was just like tennis, field hockey, um, lacrosse. What else? just a gigantic like sports facility kind of thing that was pretty cool yeah at a bar a restaurant yeah oh yeah film room yeah yeah all that kind of stuff that was pretty cool and it was cool to see it in germany too yeah like i knew i didn't know much about um like this you know Ger the german like league or anything like that yeah. but it was pretty good i was i remember being uh, impressed with their facilities um what else let me ask you this have you ever played in a in a rink or like a field that was just absolutely terrible maybe just mud up to your calves just yeah. a play like give me an, a give me a give me a story of just like one of the worst worst games you've ever played in um my team in college we played against uh lees mccray they're a, D, a division two team in um, north carolina like in the mountains and their field was it we played it was like my first we played mars hill and then lees mccray it was my first two games in call in college yeah and um it was like late February. It was in North Carolina. So I'm thinking it's down South. Like, yeah. you know, it'll be warm, but it was like in the mountains and it was freezing. Did yeah. you bring any long gear, like warm gear to play? Yeah, we had all that stuff, but yeah. like it's still, you couldn't, you know, <laughs> couldn't escape it. But we were playing Lees McRae. Mars Hill, I believe had turf, but Lees McRae had grass and it was like raining and muddy. And I remember one time that we, the ball just disappeared. There was like a pile up for a loose ball and the refs had to blow it down just because the ball disappeared and like mud. And <laughs> yeah, that was, that was pretty interesting. Um, New Orleans, the fields down there were pretty tough. Probably swampy. Um, it, it didn't rain too much. It was like kind of overcast and it was good. It got out of the winter anyway. It wasn't super warm down there, but like, yeah, yeah the fields were like, some areas were like sand, some mud, some grass. They were, they were terrible. <laughs> well, that's like New Orleans in general. Apparently, I, like it doesn't, if even if it doesn't rain, everything's just wet all the time. Yeah. Just from the, the, the swamps. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. When you just got down there, was it wet when you were there already? You said you just got back from there? Yeah. Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. Not overly, I don't think. No? No. I don't know. No. It was my first time there, though. It was a wicked city. Oh, was it? It was awesome, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. You ever been to Boston? Yeah. I just got back from there. I was on the Harvard campus and... Really? The Boston Cannons. Yeah. 
practice facility was i don't know if it's a practice facility but they were practicing there like they had a bunch of gear outside i don't know if the whole team was there but there's just a couple guys throwing in there because the nll season's going on right now but anyways it was just cool like the amount of equipment they got the training staff that was there it yeah. was just top of the line something i've never experienced before in my life yeah, i didn't ML, mll team yeah yeah the mll yes sorry mll yeah. but the nll is going on right now so yeah. that's why the but nonetheless just seeing the facility seeing uh all the sticks all the shoes lined up i think that's what it was it was like a fitting or something like that maybe a photo shoot or something very likely yeah and uh and you know i've just never been experienced there i've never been uh exposed to anything like that especially in lacrosse and it was just incredible some of these pros how they were being being treated yeah it's just incredible unbelievable that's half the fun really it is you're lucky enough uh Lucky enough to get on get on a team that you get treated like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What are some of the better uh, lacrosse organizations in the NLL? Do you know? Like I know Toronto Rock might be one. Yeah, I can't really say. You can't um, say. Hopefully Halifax. I don't know. Hopefully, are you gonna try out? <laughs> They're having open tryouts apparently. Really? I think I didn't so. Hear about that no. Might yeah. as well. <laughs> get, a, get, a, get a jersey out of it maybe <laughs> yeah well honestly i'll do it for the jersey for sure that'd be sick yeah i'm excited to go to the games you're gonna go obviously yeah yeah checking out some uh season tickets and stuff like that so, yeah yeah they're affordable what do you think um how do you think people in halifax are going to uh, react to the sport of lacrosse at, at a professional level because there are you got to admit there's going to be some people that are going to go and be like you know, my friend plays lacrosse, you know, it's physical, so I'm going to go. But how do you think, do you think people are actually going to enjoy it when they go? Or do you think there's going to be a little rough patch or what's your I, thought process on it? Um, I hope not. I've, uh, honestly, I thought if Halifax was going to get an NLL team, I thought it would have been right after, right after the world championships were here. Yeah. Um, I remember the Canada Iroquois gold medal game was pretty well attended. I can't remember what the numbers were, but I think maybe in the high thousands, 70,000, maybe. Lower Bowl was pretty... Was, yeah, so what would that be? Five? Five, six, seven? Yeah, no. So seven's the whole thing, I think. Or maybe 10 is. I'd say it would be like five or six. Yeah. Around there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, I, just, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. It's going to be good for the city, though, I think. Just obviously... We've never had a true like pro team. Yeah. This is the city's chance to see what real lacrosse looks like. Yeah, what real lacrosse looks like and what the best in the world at a given sport looks like and live. Well, well that's the thing. It's like the, it's the best in the world. Yeah. It's downtown Halifax. It's a physical game. There's going to be alcohol. We have a young community in downtown Halifax. Yeah. A lot of people like you probably have a lot of friends that, you know, don't play lacrosse, but they're still interested in the game. Yeah, 100 percent. And if they're interested in maybe they're not interested in seeing us play, but they will definitely, I think, be interested in seeing the <laughs> best awesome. of the best play. Let's hope. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. At least that's my mindset. Yeah, I play the game and I'm excited to see the best of the best, you definitely. know? Definitely. There's, uh, a, there's an element that's going to be great. Yeah. But as for, I mean, I haven't heard too much about the team. I'm not really sure what what kind of fan base they're going to need to sort of make money and stay, stay in town. I'm not really sure, but I'd have yeah. to think that, I mean, the Rochester night, uh, like it's a weird situation too, where Rochester is moving, but they're staying. Yeah. But they're getting a, uh, another team, a franchise, uh, like a, uh, an expansion franchise, excuse me, that are staying and just keeping the name. So that's kind of weird. Yeah. When the guys came over and talked about that, I was a little confused by that as well. Same. But somebody explained it to me sort of when the news like first sort of broke and I was like, that doesn't sound right. But yeah. I'm assuming that, you know, a lot of thought and a lot of money is going into this. So it's nobody wants it to fail, you know, so. No. But. Uh, and if there is one thing I think that Halifax is good at, it's supporting local. Sure. You know, it doesn't even have to be lacrosse or hockey. It could be a restaurant. You know, if someone sees a local coffee shop open up next to a Starbucks. I'd say eight people out of 10 are probably going to go to the local coffee shop just to support it. Maybe. So, you know what I mean? So with the local lacrosse community, I think, you know, there's how many people do you think in the HRM are just truly big lacrosse fans? I couldn't even put a number on it. Could you? <sighs> Tens of that 10,000? Mm, Less? Mm, Seven? I'd hate to say. I'd hate to guess. I'm not really sure. That's so you got to think, you got to think of that number and then you got to think of friends and just the common interested person that's, you know, interested, excuse me, in lacrosse. Yeah. Well, well, anyways, uh, the lacrosse community is already sold. Like they're already going to go. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I speak I, like, I'm it's just about finding the new fans. Sure. Yeah. And how do you do that? I, I don't know, but I'm like, I'm obviously pretty biased being a lacrosse person, but in my, I've said it for a long time, in my opinion, it's the best spectator sport just from you know, somebody who's not a lacrosse person can go in 
and you know what's going on. There's not the rules are very obviously Halifax being a hockey town. There's a lot of rules that are similar to hockey. Um, there's like I don't know if you've ever been to an NLL game, but yeah. there's music playing. It's like a big party. There's you know, it's like a basketball game, but with no whistles. Totally. Yeah. You know. Yeah, definitely. But um, yeah, it's got everything that anybody wants to see. Lots of goals. It's fast. There's hits. There's the odd fight. Like. Yeah. Exactly the points. Yeah, I just made like the. It's a physical. It's a physical. Excuse me, game and people love physicality around here. Sure, they love to drink and they love quickness. So <laughs> yeah, I, that's why I think it's a triple threat and it's going to do well. Yeah, I hope so. Like the tur- Did you go to the? Did you go to the opening party? The, I uh, didn't. No, no. T- huge turnout. Apparently, they're gonna. They're building like a bunch of new bars and stuff. Like I always. Call, I don't call it the Scotia Bank Center. I call it the Metro Center. <laughs> Same. Good for you, Metro <laughs> yeah. Center. Of course. Anyway, yeah, I just. <laughs> I'm like, how old are you? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, apparently they're building some new bars and stuff like that. So they're gearing up for, you know, hopefully the long run. That's like the players were pumped about it. Like the three guys that came over, Kyle and those guys, they didn't want to leave. Like I'm sure they're happy where they're playing in Rochester. But when they came here and just saw the fans that were welcoming them, yeah. they were pumped. So yeah, and you got to remember these guys are young. They're like younger 20s. So yeah. moving to another city, playing here. I got to think. Yeah, I got to think if I was like fresh out of college, early 20s and hey, you're going to play a pro sport in Halifax, I'd be like, sweet. Right downtown, like yes. right on the white. Like college city. College city, yeah. You know what I mean? There's a lot of lot of draws, for sure. It'd be a, yeah, good for them. <laughs> they, they were pumped. Like, they, as soon as they got here, they're like, all right, so what's there really to do? Because when they got here, they, they went to like Q104 and Global, and, you know, you got to act a little bit more professional. And then they sure. came here, they're yeah. like, all right, so what's what's there to really do around what's here? Really going what's on? going on here? <laughs> and then I was telling them, and, and they were pretty pumped about it. Yeah. So it should be good, man. In my experience, yeah. The world over and whatever age the cross players are still the cross players, so yeah, just people. They're gonna want to want to get into some yeah. fun and stuff like that. Yeah, it'll be cool. It'll be good. Yeah. Um. All right. So what's new with you? I know that the uh, the preseason tournament is coming up April twenty eighth. I think in Churro. The spring jam, yeah. The spring jam, yeah. yeah. So when do tryouts and everything start uh, for you? Is it around that time, or is your team gonna be picked by the time the tournament starts? How does how does that all work for you? No, typically we usually have some floor times leading up to it, and we cool. use the spring jam like as part of our uh, tryouts, as part of our process. Yeah, so cool. Yeah. So have yeah. you guys ever done this tournament before? Yeah, yeah. Um, this will be is this the third or fourth in a row? Maybe. I don't know. Something is it, like that. Is it yeah. at the neutral rink? I'm not even sure. Oh, I'm not sure. Uh, where was it hosted last year? Uh, I'm usually in Prague, like when that happens. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. So like, I've got to try to try to fly figure, out yeah so you like in the last couple of years i'll we'd have five to six sort of tryouts i usually try to maybe have the team picked after like three and then the teams together i go well kj was coaching with uh with okay. me there for a few years so yeah he and i would go yeah and kind of thing and just hope everything <laughs> hope everything stays in order while we're gone yeah uh, usually we would come home and yeah i can't remember what the first the season usually opens up in the first week of may so it all happens like super it, leading up to it it's lacrosse season you're like oh it's a week away and then you know it's prog well it's tryout for me tryouts prog come home junior season starts a month in senior starts like it's just it's fun though oh yeah totally yeah. like it's like oh you're a little overwhelmed but at the same time you're like yeah and especially you're like summer's here yeah you know what i mean yeah like right after St. Patty's Day, it's like summer's here, lacrosse season's here. Yeah. It's time to go. The hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I could finally start getting some vitamin D again. <laughs> Everyone's yeah. white as hell out here, eh? Oh, depressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. That's sick. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about going back to, uh, I guess we already did talk about going back to Prague. So after, I guess, when the season starts here uh, for the junior league, what are some things like you're looking forward to about the league? Are you guys going to be as strong as you guys have been the past three years? Or do you guys have some weak links? Maybe you lost some good players going away. What's the, what are you thinking about the team this year? I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, I'm not really worried about it too much. Uh, we've been left with question marks, I guess in, in years past and it's yeah. worked out just fine. So I'm expecting something similar this year. Mm. Um, losing Brett and Penny is going to be a big one. Um, losing Brett McKinnon our, our goalie, um, one of our goalies, excuse me. That'll be uh, that'll be big shoes to fill. Um, there's some we're not really sh- what a couple guys might be going away, might not be, yeah, kind of thing like that. So yeah. yeah, there's definitely some stuff to figure out. But as far as our core group and stuff like that, we'll be we'll be fine. Cool. We, dra- we drafted pretty well. We're excited about a couple guys that we've got coming up. So yeah, how does the draft work in the junior league? 
Um, it's a little different now. There's uh, well, we had the com- uh, combine again this year, like a midget combine. Which That's was, cool. Which, yeah, it was really it was, it was at the Gray Arena. What kind um, of drills do you put them through? I didn't have anything to do with it. I oh. just, yeah, went and watched, and uh, they had them broken up into like a red, yellow, white, and blue. I think. What do you they, mean, like sec- just sections? Yeah, they all uh, teams. I guess. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So no, that was it was uh, KJ and who else put that on? I can't think. But yeah, they did a really good job. So that's I'm, obviously good for the league, good for the good for the coaches, good for all the teams involved. But um, so the draft, they're working towards an open draft. What does that mean? Um, you have to. Well, this year it was different because typically you like your organization your guys in your organization you just kind of you know kept yeah um but they're trying to get away from that and so this year we had to um for every how did how do i explain it for every you could basically for every organ every kid from your organization over three i think you could save three but after that you would uh forfeit a draft pick okay for every i believe that's how it worked okay it's very confusing anyhow so but <laughs> over over the next couple of years are working towards an open draft okay so which uh is not really good for i guess the dartmouth bandits given that like like i said earlier our, our organization is typically pretty strong yeah so well that's a good thing it's good, for, it's yeah. good for parity in the league and it's it's good overall okay so i don't totally hate it i was gonna say <laughs> like yeah if it's an open draft and you're able to see yeah i like it it's yeah. interesting a combine at that young of an age but i guess if if you do want to I guess I'm trying to think of the NHL. I guess the kids are that young too, like 17, 18 years old when they're going into the NHL or when they're getting drafted. Yeah. Are they doing like bench press and things like that at the combine? Do you know? There was some fitness stuff. Yeah. yeah. I, was, I was, I wouldn't know the first thing of how, you know, how to, <laughs> how to organize something like that or, or what's really appropriate. Or, but you went to watch, right? Yeah. But yeah, there definitely was some fitness stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. It was cool. It was freezing in there too. I felt bad for these kids, but <laughs> yeah. So I couldn't imagine doing a combine and midget. Like if I was like, if I was 15, yeah, they're young. Yeah. They're kids. Yeah. Like 15 years old. If someone told me, all right, Justin, you got to go do a combine to go play junior lacrosse. I'd, Everybody's watching. Everyone's watching. I just be like, what? I don't, I, I don't think I did a push up till I was 17. <laughs> you know what? I couldn't <laughs> physical fitness. Only thing I did was just play the game and that was good enough. Yeah. And I think honest, I think that's something that's kind of, I mean, it's me too, really. You just chuck but it against the wall, the ball. Go play wall ball. Maybe go for the odd run. But now kids are like and again just me growing up there was a lot of kids that played lacrosse but maybe not that many lacrosse players but now that's you know kids are going to the gym kids are playing wall ball kids are you know the the days where you put the biggest kid in in nets are gone the the days where it's like you know oh, a bunch of my hockey buddies want to come play lacrosse all oh, they just stick them on d mm. you know what i mean so like it's just show go, goes to show you the growth of the game around here that's cool man that's exciting yeah from, so. the, from the times where most of the guys on the team would just be working a landscaping job from nine to five and then go to the rink for seven and play the game and still just have all the energy in the world to now <laughs> doing combines working out getting better towards the game that's three or that's a 180 for me that's uh, that's awesome i Same. love hearing that yeah totally. that's wicked yep all right, man. Well, we're coming up on an hour here. So the Already? last, the last, the last minute, if whatever you want to say to like your friends or the team or whatever you want to say, it's all you, anything. Support the NLL team, support the East Coast Junior Lacrosse League. Go buy a stick if you don't have one. Go watch a game. Get involved. Well said. All right, Luke. Thanks for coming on the podcast, man. I Thank appreciate you. it. Yeah, I appreciate you. Thanks, man. No worries. Anytime uh, you guys are on social media, make sure to go to the high button networks, like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. We're out, guys. Peace.